Uh, so this tutorial is to show you what examiners are looking for when you have to interpret photographs and in this case looking at landscapes of coastal erosion. Uh, so take a look at this photograph. Um, when you're first presented with it you may have to comment on what you can see. So the first thing you can see which is obvious is a bay which is located here and you can assume that the bay is made of less resistant softer geology. Um, in contrast uh, you have here a headland which juts out from the mainland and you can assume that the geology is more resistant, it's a harder geology. Interestingly on this headland there is a small bay within the harder geology and this can happen um, mostly because somewhere along this harder geology there is a fault line, a, an extra set of cracks um, within the geology which has caused erosion to increase. Other things that you may spot on this photograph with a keen eye, you may see a cave, um, some small crevices there and even the beginnings of a wave cut platform there. On this photograph a typical question is, is the photo taken at high tide or low tide? How can you tell? Well you can see it's low tide because here it's visible, you can see a wave cut platform and this would be covered at high tide. Um, you only get a wave cut platform when you have a harder geology and in this case the harder geology are the chalk cliffs behind. Uh, so here's another photograph of a wave cut platform. In the foreground you can see the rock pools here and here uh, filled with water so you know that the tide has gone out, it's low tide. Those A-level students amongst you should not only spot that this is chalk but it's full of joints which are vertical cracks, bedding planes which are horizontal and you would be expected to describe the process of erosion here. Not only is it hydraulic action but also you would have to incorporate the idea of cavitation i.e. the release of the um, air bubbles as the wave pounds the cliff. If you have a very keen eye you may spot the shingle beach um, and at, at high tide with very powerful waves you would be expected to um, state that corrasion or abrasion happens as a result of the shingle beach being there. And both of these um, process of erosion will um, cause the um, cliff to retreat over time enlarging the wave cut platform. Uh, so this photograph of erosion is a beautiful one of an arch. Um, it has some really interesting things to pick out. Um, first of all, um, take a look at the geology here. You can see um, different layers, so we can um, categorically say that it's some kind of sedimentary rock. And you can see a lovely um, wave cut notch here and here, um, which are, are created at due to erosion between low and high tide and it's not just um, processes of erosion which help which will help to to form this arch um, but also there's some um, weathering that is going on um, on the roof of the arch um, commonly known as sub aerial weathering and we can pick out some of those we've got biological weathering on the roof here from the vegetation um, you can assume that there would be crystallization um, going on in the bedding planes or the joints and also um, possibly if you see a reddish colour um, on geology um, you might assume that there's some oxidation going on also. And it is these finer details particularly at, at um, A star level at GCSE and also at A level which will stand you out from the other candidates. So take your time look at the photograph, incorporate as many geographical words as you can. Um, now this photograph of an arch, um, this is at Flamborough Head uh, along the North Yorkshire coastline, um, this has got some really interesting points. Not only um, at the roof of the arch have you got sub aerial weathering, the, the biological weathering going on there, um, but you can assume because you can see some white, it's chalk or limestone, and so there will be some carbonation going on there. 
um, if you look very closely uh, at the bottom of this photograph you can see that the bedding planes, the horizontal lines, they're quite close together compared to the ones at the top and this is due to pressure, the weight of the cliffs um, which are bearing down at the bottom here and you can see a lot more cracks here at the bottom and that makes the bedding planes weaker, more likely to um, become subject to erosion and weathering and um, which helps probably to explain um, partly the well-formed wave cut notch there between the um, high and the low tide marks. And finally, um, those GCSE students of you watching, um, well-formed arch, a stack and a stump. And one, else, one other thing you can spot on here, can you see the reddish colours on this geology here? probably evidence of oxidation. So you can include that all-important phrase, sub-aerial weathering, which weakens the geology.